Hey guys, it's Danny with Boys in Perfection, and this is your weekly energy check. <laughs> I don't know what's funny. Anyway, this is your weekly energy check reading for the week of Sunday, June 12th, 2022. <laughs> so the zodiac to embody this week, we actually got two cards. We have Pisces and Aquarius. Pisces, which reads sensitize, and Aquarius, which reads collaborate. And then for the house to focus on this week, we have the fifth house, which reads passion. <laughs> you guys are gonna <laughs> You guys are gonna have to really like pardon me because like I don't know why I'm so goofy right now. <laughs> I'm so goofy. I cannot help. <laughs> And I don't, I'm not I'm not about to keep editing this out. So maybe that's an omen, okay? With that being said, I'm I'm feeling the need to say this. Notice how Pisces goes to Aquarius from 12 to 11. And last week we spoke about the number 12 being the number of self mastery, right? Well, don't water yourself down, okay? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to know everything, but you need to own what it is that is under your belt that you do have to offer, okay? Um, and as you can see, like I said, 12 is descending to 11 and then, um, you see the two fish in the Pisces, um, card. It's, it's almost like a yin yang energy and it's almost like, Hey, I'm popping out. I'm being myself, but then you retreat. And then an Aquarius card, as you can see, there's a bigger vase or cup being poured into a smaller cup or vase or whatever that is. Right? So... <laughs> It's like an indication of don't water yourself down, don't minimize yourself, don't downplay your talents and your gifts and where you've um, started to where you are now. Like every little step of the way matters and it's up to you to hold that dear to your heart and, and, and believe that you have the abilities to move forward with whatever it is that you're into, with whatever it is that you're completing this week. Just keep in mind your individuality, especially with the number 11. Ones represent new beginnings, individuality, potential, opportunity. It's literally the portal to manifest, right? Which leads me into the card regarding the fifth house. Number 43. It adds up to seven and it reduces down to one. And the number seven is about faith, wisdom, reflection, and understanding. So this week, as you move towards whatever it is that you're working on, I need you to be aware of the fact that you are indeed well-equipped to dive in here first. Although I'm picking up on like, you know, a school setting or the workplace, you know, things along those lines, it doesn't necessarily have to adhere to that. It could be your your projects, your hobbies, what you're interested in on the side, like, you know, during your alone time. Or it can simply just be, you know, hanging out with a group of friends or family or just being around people in general. Just don't get choked up on being who you are. All right, so back to Pisces descending into Aquarius. Um, it's pretty interesting, right? So you have Pisces going backwards, right? It's, it's the last of the zodiac. Aquarius is before Pisces, but with this particular setup, you have Pisces again going into Aquarius. Um, and it's saying sensitize and collaborate, right? So um, Pisces, its mantra is I believe. And then Aquarius's mantra is I know. <sighs> Your faith. Pour it all into what you have worked towards up until this point. Believe in your abilities. Believe in your work. Believe in the results. Believe in yourself. This week, I want you to focus on validating yourself, okay? It's rather interesting because the last weekly energy check-in that I did, Pisces was the topic of concern. This go around, it is, but it's paired with Aquarius. 
Um, Pisces is ruled by Neptune. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus is the planet of innovation and originality, individuality, all of the above, right? So then you have the fifth house. <clears throat> and the zodiac placed in the fifth house is Leo, which is represented by the sun. Risk-taking, self-esteem, loved ones, children, fun, pleasure, creativity. All those lovely things, right? I just be bold, especially with that Leo energy. Be bold for yourself, okay? Stay in alignment with yourself for yourself. It's not about everything and everybody else. It's just not. It's about you feeling your best, being your best, doing you and being who you are. So a channel message that I received is humble yourself. Um... This may be a particular concept that you're familiar with just due to the fact that people are projecting this onto you. Um, but I'm mostly, I'm mostly, I'm mostly getting that it's, it's more so you doing it to yourself or it, it's gotten to the point to where you're so used to trying to make other people feel comfortable about where they are that you just literally hide away in the background. You basically just dim your own light. So, it seems this is a constant reminder you personally give yourself. That's super thoughtful for the sake of others' comfort. However, do you realize that too much humility can be a not-so-great benefit for yourself? Don't get too comfortable with downplaying who you are and what you stand for, whether it be where you come from, where you are now, and where you are headed. Do you notice a pattern? You have the tendency to show just a pinch of your greatness and then quickly retreat. Not only does this confuse the universe with mixed signals, but you throw yourself off balance with this habit. This week, I want you to challenge yourself. Instead of playing it small, give every single thought a plan of action and execute it to the best of your ability. Don't worry about the results or outcome. Instead, focus on how good and liberated people, places, and things make you feel when you are committed to being and expressing yourself. Again, don't worry about the results or outcome. Instead, focus on how good and liberated people, places, and things make you feel when you are committed to being and expressing yourself. You may feel like the eyeball out at times. There is emphasis on being singled out this week. Use this to your advantage. Instead of getting defensive or discouraged, see it as a lights, camera, and action kind of opportunity. So the theme of this week is turn a sour situation sweet. We have the Three of Wands, the Page of Swords, the Eight of Wands, and the Ten of Pentacles. Um, and then we have the Six of Wands, the King of Wands, and the Nine of Pentacles, um, clarifying the Three of Wands. And then we have the Eight of Pentacles, clarifying the Page of Swords. A lot of people are pretentious when it comes to your presence. Many act as if you and your accomplishments are not a big deal, but they are just characters playing their role. Because when you aren't around, you're somehow the major topic of discussion, whether good or bad. And overall, you're held in a high regard. Most would admit this truth because they're simply immature and egotistical. However, that should not stop you from maintaining your abundant flow of being and doing. Keep going anyway. And there's emphasis on this because of the number eight. Like I said, you have the eight of wands, you have the eight of pentacles. And eight represents movement, change, attainment. All right, and it's represented by the strength card, the star card. I'm, I'm feeling real big Jupiter vibes right now, too. Like, you have so much to look forward to, and you have so much to gain staying in this energy. So, don't get too caught up on external influences to the point that you psych your own self out and you knock yourself off your own pedestal. So, yes, humble yourself, but. Own your position in life as well. The chakra to nurture this week is your third eye, um, which is your pineal gland. And you're going to fall into one of the three categories, and that's for you to decipher. So the first category is underactive. Can't see the bigger picture. It can be easily influenced, confused about one's purpose, doubting oneself. The second one is balance. Intuitive, charismatic, can meditate, knows one's purpose, seen as wise. Last but not least, overactive, spaced out, lost, worrying, seen as living in a fantasy world. If you're easing up on your routines, make sure you at least stay up on your meditation. Make sure you're getting the appropriate amount of sleep. 
And most importantly, do not sleep on your passions and potential. Pay close attention to your dreams this week. Your guys are trying to communicate. For some of you, they find it easier this way because you're way too logical during your wake life. Things aren't always what they appear upon first impression. And that ties back into what I was saying about, you know, people disregarding you, people minimizing you, um, making it seem as if you're not one way and you are that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, so just don't internalize what's going on around you again. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just do you, boo-boo. Do you. Be you. And don't be your own worst enemy, I guess, so to say. Like, people can only use you against yourself. So with that being said, just make sure that you're taking advantage of the situation. Back to what I was saying about lights, camera, action. And you utilize that Aquarius energy and transmute that shit. To make it work in your favor. So with these messages, this is what I compose. Don't use humility as an excuse to be meek. Continue being graceful, but recognize that it's time to be courageously bold. Simultaneously. Envision the reality you wish to manifest and follow through with ease because you are indeed supported by higher forces. All right, so for your angel numbers, the number six wants to be seen and heard. Notice I said seen and heard. People are wanting to experience you. So don't be scared of experiencing yourself first and foremost, all right? Have some compassion. Things are looking up for you. Things are harmonious. Problem solve. Maneuver your way through the bull crap, okay? Again, transmute. Six is also represented by the lovers and the devil. Back to that balance, that staying in alignment and staying on your throne. Mm -hmm.